Hello, my friends from EurovEnglish.com. That's me, Robbie, from EnglishHarmony.com. And this is yet another video installment in the series of videos dedicated to you, my dear EurovEnglish.com subscribers, my dear fellow foreign English speakers who aspire to become fluent this year. And of course, everyone else is welcome to watch this video. Anybody who might have tuned into my website, my YouTube channel, you're welcome to watch this video where we're going to look at the importance of using your hobbies and interests as stepping stones in order to aid your fluency improvement and in order to maintain your motivation to improve your English language. Because, let's face it, my friends, it's all nice and well. We may be motivated uh, long enough to improve our vocabulary and phraseology for a few months into the year, you know, but as the time goes on, probably your interest wanes and your motivation and commitment to improve the English language wanes for the simple reason that you're probably not doing things which are directly related to your life. You know what I mean? You are looking up some videos, learning some vocabulary, phraseology, which is generally relevant to anybody, but you might not have that special interest in the subject that would hold your attention and your motivation for long enough to make it your long life habit. And here's the deal, my friends. Anybody has hobbies or interests. Even if you're not particularly keen on anything, like reading, fitness, or some particular outdoor activity, like gardening, or trekking, or whatever it might be, you still surely have something you enjoy doing on a regular basis. Even watching TV qualifies for a hobby through which you can improve your English language. Just think about it, my friends. If you watch a particular TV program or show every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, right? And now think about it. If you do it in your native language, if you watch those programs on your native language channels, dubbed in your native language, why not start doing that in the English language? Just go online. There's billions of videos on YouTube, there's websites like Netflix, which are very cheap, for $7 a month, if I'm not mistaken. You can watch hundreds and thousands of TV drama series, whatnot, and you can do it all in English. And you can gradually ease into that habit of enjoying your favorite TV show, for instance, in English. And even though you've been doing that in your native language for the biggest part of your life, it doesn't really take that much effort to make it your habit in English. It will only take you a couple of months to get to grips with all the language used in that particular show, all the phraseology, all the slang, and then all of a sudden it will become like a walk in the park, you know. So once it becomes your second nature, once you start enjoying that hobby, that activity through the English language, that's when the English language becomes a permanent part of your life and you don't even have to keep motivating yourself because that activity is a motivator good enough. And likewise, if you are into fitness, for example, like me, I'm a keen runner, I also work out in my home gym, right? I look all the necessary information online in regard to nutrition, exercising and all the related stuff. I look it all up in English. I wouldn't go even near my native language websites for the simple reason that English is my passion. And even if you're not that passionate about the English language as such, you can still motivate yourself enough by, as I said, enjoying your hobbies through English. And then that brings us to the second point, all the relevant vocabulary and phraseology. You will learn phrases and new English words which are relevant to your life because your life, let's face it, my friends, is largely defined by what you do, right? And what you do is your hobbies and interests. If we take out the nine hours you spend at work, you know, all the leisure time and spare time you have is probably 50% dedicated to some interests and activities that are of particular importance to you as a person. So what better way to immerse yourself in the English language by 100% than by enjoying those hobbies through the English language and then you would actually acquire all the necessary phraseology and vocabulary which is relevant to your life. 
because there's millions of words in the English language and if you go about your English language improvement by learning some random words and uh, phrases and all that kind of thing, it'll still be useful, but you won't embed all that vocabulary into your brain and those associations aren't going to be as strong as they could be if you're not really interested in it. You know, if you just do it for the sake of improving your English, it will still work, but it won't be as efficient. Let's say, for example, I'm a keen reader, and currently I'm reading this book, Legend. It's dystopian fiction. Dystopian means that it's set in future, and the typical setting would involve some uh, world government that's taken over the civilians, and it's all like a fascist dictatorship, and then uh, this is all children's fiction I'm reading, actually young adults, so the typical, the main character would be about 15, 16 years old, and uh, it's really like sci-fi fiction set in the future, right? And I take a particular interest in the dystopian fiction ever since I discovered it about half a year ago or so, you know? And then I read all this fiction and I make sure that I add on loads of vocabulary from that fiction onto my active vocabulary. And I recently actually set myself a goal to learn 50 new American phrases. You may want to check out this video where I'm introducing you to the concept and uh, I'm telling you how I go about achieving that goal, right? I'm adding all that phraseology from the books onto my active vocabulary by way of spoken English practice, which is another way I warmly suggest you improve your English language with engaging frequent spoken English practice and if you talk about subjects that are of particular relevance to you, to your life, like me, I take a keen interest in dystopian fiction and then I discuss all that in the videos I'm publishing on my YouTube channel, but even apart from those videos, I engage in a lot of self-practice by myself and I discuss all that fiction, right? So that's my life. Dystopian fiction does form part of my life and I actively improve my English in that particular area of my life, you know? And I learn all the necessary vocabulary and phraseology which is directly related to, to that particular area of my interest. And you may want to do the same if you're really serious about your fluency improvement. So basically, motivation. If you enjoy hobbies through the English language, you won't have to motivate yourself because the hobby and interest in itself is a motivator good enough. Secondly, phraseology and vocabulary. If you enjoy your hobbies through the English language, you will quite naturally learn all the necessary vocabulary and phraseology which is relevant to your life because hobbies form a big part of your life. But if you go about your fluency improvement by learning some abstract grammar lists or something very general, you may find that they're not really relevant to your life. And thirdly, if you enjoy your hobbies and interests through the English language, it will invariably offer more opportunities for you down the line. Say, for instance, if you are a keen gardener, for example, and you spend the biggest part of your day out in a back garden, planting new plants into flower beds, and digging up the lawn to make room for more flower beds, and uh, tending to your plants in the greenhouse or whatever, and maybe you're all into living green, and you take a particular interest in the related things, right? If you start enjoying all that through the English language, if you read the relevant literature in English, you'll look up information online related to gardening and green living in English only. Over time, you will definitely form some human contacts. You know, you will start socializing with people who, who are also in gardening, and you may as well just start doing it in English. Find friends, international friends, start contacting people online who also share your interest on forums and uh, interest groups and that's how you build your social network and who knows maybe that will offer you some opportunities down the line and just because you did enjoy the hobby through the English language as opposed to staying local and doing it only through your native language you know as most people do so just a little bit of effort you have to gradually kind of make the transition from enjoying your hobby in your native language and you have to make the transition into doing it in English and it'll take you some time to adjust, a few months probably, to get grips with the basic vocabulary, the industry slang and lingo and all the specific terms. But then 
if you start doing that and you really enjoy it, and there's no reason why you shouldn't for the simple reason that it's your hobby, right? Then all of a sudden it becomes a walk in the park and it will offer you so many opportunities down the line. So my advice of the day is please, my friends, start enjoying your hobbies through the English language and that will provide you with all the necessary motivation to keep improving your language, your English for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching, my friends, and see you soon again.